This is the 2024 Toyota Highlander XSE. If you're in the market for a new crossover SUV, then the Highlander XSE might be perfect for you. It has heated leather seats and a sunroof and comes with great Toyota Safety Sense features like blind spot sensors and lane departure alert. Plus, its combined fuel economy is around 25 miles to the gallon. This Highlander checks all of the boxes if you're looking for a spacious, dependable, and comfortable new ride. Today, we're taking Billy Roach for a ride. The 6'2 defenseman is in his first full season with Roanoke, and the Braintree, Massachusetts native has 6 goals, 10 assists, and a plus 4 rating in 49 games this season. Bill, how's it going, buddy? How are you, Mitch? Doing well. I'm Mitch Stewart, and this is Driving with the Dogs. Well, good to see you, man. Hope everything's been going all right. We've had a, a long day here at the oh, rink. Yeah. Long day, long week. <laughs> you were here last March for a little while, and then this season's been your first full year in Roanoke. But yeah. I'm just curious, what kind of happened between you and head coach Jan Bremner? How did you get in touch with him, and how did Roanoke end up kind of end up on your radar last year? Um, it was kind of just honestly, Roanoke was really the first team that showed interest after my college season ended, and. I had received a text from a former coach and one of my actual best friends, uh, Mikhail Bryan, and he had said that Dan was looking for my number, and I said, that's a, that's okay, give him my number, and Dan just kind of called me. He said, can you be down here tomorrow? I said, yeah, I'll get in the car and drive right in the morning. It was Wednesday, and I drove right down on a Wednesday, and it was like nine-hour drive, and I made it here. <laughs> Rest is history, right? Yep. You had quite the debut weekend last year. You scored in your pro debut in a dog's win. And from from what I know, you washed it down with a little trip to Waffle House afterward. Yeah. And a couple of the fans saw you. And I think from that point on, you kind of became a fan favorite. What was it like for you as far as just kind of that debut weekend last season, scoring in your first pro game? It was something I'll never forget. Um, you can tell just the passion in the city, the passion in the arena. Um, and then, like you said, get someone bought my meal after the game. It was pretty special, and I kind of just feel like I'm at home here. So, Now, this past summer, I know you started in camp with the Rapid City Rush and the ECHL, but it seemed like very early on that you and Dan Bremner had talked. You decided you were going to come back here if, if that's what I'm up coming to. What was that conversation like heading into this season when he got in touch with you and asked you to come back? Um, I think it was very easy, um, honestly. I know I had gotten released last year, but something that stuck out to me about Coach Bremner was he told me he's going to go with his guys, and he said he'll get. Me, he said that I would be one of the first guys to call in the summer, and I think I respect that a lot about Coach Dan. He, you know, went with his guys. He's loyal to his guys from all last year, and then kind of over the summer, I, it was very easy. Um, like I said, I felt at home with Roanoke, and it was kind of the only team that I would, I would go play for, and they gave me a shot last year, so. I figured I would be right back with them. Now, you're originally from Braintree, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. right in the Boston area. Yep. You're a proud Boston guy. <laughs> yeah. What was it like for you growing up there? What were some of the things that you and, and your family kind of like to do uh, when you're back up at home? Honestly, I got the sweatshirt on right now. It's called <laughs> Sullivan's Castle Island, but it's a spot in South Boston that uh, I, I would say my dad's a little more obsessed with it than my mom, but I actually went there. They took me... Uh, it was the first place I went when I was out of the womb, and ever since then, I kind of, it's been my favorite lunch spot. It's right on the water, and, you know, me and my dad and my family, we go take walks. We have lunch together there. But I think when I'm home, I just, I really enjoy spending time with my family and stuff like that. We're a really close-knit family, and I think family is kind of everything to me. You ended up playing originally at Suffolk University. You played there for four years. Mm -hmm. You were a team captain there your senior season, but still had that extra year of eligibility with COVID. You decided to transfer to Curry College. I've got kind of a two-parter for you here. First, what was your college experience just like between those two places? And second, what was, went into that decision for you to decide to end up going to Curry after you'd been at Suffolk for four years? It was a whirlwind, honestly, because, you know, I think at the end of my sophomore year, COVID had hit. But uh, I definitely enjoyed the first two years of college. Uh, my freshman and sophomore year, being in downtown Boston was absolutely awesome. <laughs> and then, you know, COVID hit, and then junior year it was kind of a wash but I think we all knew we were going to play again at some point in senior year ended up being pretty fun but then I kind of realized that I had I definitely still had a lot to give um, I could fall back on education too and I ended up taking an MBA offer to go 
to be able to play my fifth year. And I think this, I put a lot of things into this decision. Um, it was with my education, you know, getting another, get another degree can always one up me for my competition after hockey. And then being able to develop as a human and as a hockey player at Curry, um, it's very, very up and coming program. Coach Roundy, he's he's the best. He's done such a good job ever since he's been there, and they had a hell of a year this year. So, Curry was one of the best years of my life for sure. From what I can find, you were an academic weapon. Yes. Oh, I mean, like you were like honor roll, <laughs> dean's list, like whatever you can be, all conference academic. Like yeah. you were really just crushing the books. Mm -hmm. Do you kind of have already in mind maybe like a dream gig or, or a couple of different jobs that you would consider doing yeah. once your hockey playing days do end up finishing up at some point? I definitely want to work in the business world, whether it be real estate or medical device sales or tech sales. Um, I think that's where my, my MBA and my finance skills would best suit myself. But I definitely want to be in the business world. Um, after hockey, it'll definitely be an adjustment and I know I'm gonna have to take some time away from the game because I'm way too competitive to still be kind of in it and <laughs> that's when I'll kind of just focus on the real world stuff but I think that's a, a ways away from now so if you had to vote for one guy on the team for like public office, public office. It, 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 it could be something as big as president it could be something as small as maybe just Board of Supervisors here in Roanoke or something like that. Who do you think has that uh, that ability in them to, to maybe be your pick, your I candidate? think there's a lot of guys, but one guy that sticks out to me is Josh Nettedal. Uh I think he'd be a great politician. Uh, just his voice, his command of the room. I, he definitely turns heads when he speaks, and it's uh, he's a great guy to have around, but I want him leading my country. <laughs> there you go. President Josh Nettedal. You heard your first 2024. We'll get the signs up. We'll get the campaign rolling. You're always probably the first guy to volunteer for the community appearances, specifically the school visits. Um, and I think everyone likes to kind of get out of the rink or, or get out of the office for a little bit. It's always fun to kind of cut loose with the kids, but you really seem to enjoy just getting out there, being around with them. And I just wanted to kind of know what, what it is about it that you kind of love so much that always has your number or your name first on that list. Yeah, uh, like you had said, kind of just making an impact on the community. I mean, I... I am still a big kid at heart, but just when you do go into those schools, uh, you, you do make an impression on those kids, and they, they look up to us and whatnot. Um, but I also, I, I've worked with kids uh, for three summers, I think. I had a summer job back home, and I, th I really found joy in just putting a smile on people's faces. And like I said, I, I'm still a big kid, so going into a classroom full of kids, I mean, I can kind of let loose a little bit and goof around. and. It reminds me of the glory days for sure. <laughs> I heard you're kind of kind of a beast on the sticks when it comes to Fortnite. <laughs> heard you're a big Fortnite guy. Uh, are, do you end up playing with a bunch of the guys? Is it friends from back home? Uh, what, what is it that kind of drives you yeah. to Fortnite? I would say uh, a lot of the guys this year, we've developed uh, a passion for Fortnite when we go home. Uh, me and J-Mac might be a little too loud in our house, but that's, uh, that's another <laughs> story to tell for another day. Uh, but Fortnite, I don't know, it's just... It's another thing where you can get the guys together and you know we're not in the locker room we're we're having we're sitting at home we're relaxed we're just kind of having fun with one another are you are you the nicest guy on the sticks when it comes to Fortnite? absolutely not who, who, who would be your pick if, you, if you're gonna go duos like who do you want on your team from the dogs oh uh, cj valerian easily no builds though no builds <laughs> no builds yeah okay yeah we, we don't need all that we don't we don't need these kids on the pc <laughs> yeah. popping up a, a 40 story tower on us in two seconds exactly. no way what have been kind of some of your favorite things about about playing here in roanoke I would say definitely the fans. Um, we're well taken care of too off the ice, but I would just say the fans and then the coach, all the coaching staff and whatnot from the front office down, uh, down all the way to us players, everyone in between. There's just a different sort of passion here um, for the game, for the team, for the community, and that you just don't see at other at, on other teams when you go when you go visit them. I would say it's it's the best place to play easily. Is there anything that I didn't get to or, or anything you'd like to say for the people that might be watching this here today? Thank you for all your support all year long. Um, all the guys really appreciate it, and it doesn't go unnoticed, and I can't wait for the rest of the year. Let's go win a title. Yeah, that's a great way to leave it, Bill. Yes, Thanks sir. so much again for your time, yes, buddy. Sir. Yeah, good Thank luck you. the rest of the way. Thank you. Driving with the Dogs is sponsored by Haley Toyota, the official ride of your rail yard dogs. Visit Haley Toyota online at HaleyHasItForLess.com and stay tuned for more episodes coming soon.